it's not happening at a slow rate, like it's noticeable. In the last 10 years, you can definitely see higher water levels. Six million Texans live close to sea level on the Gulf Coast. It's home to massive ports and a third of the nation's oil refining. So what does it mean for Texas when science tells us because of climate change, the sea is rising faster now than at any time in at least the last 3,000 years? Right now, we're driving to Corpus Christi to see the Gulf of Mexico. What I want to know is how much do we know about sea level rise? How do we know it? And how worried should we all be? Philippe. Nice to meet you. To find out how much we know about sea level rise on the Texas coast, I'm meeting up with Dr. Philippe Tissot. The port is, depending on how you look at it, the fourth or fifth larger in the U.S. by tonnage. Philippe studies sea level with the help of gauges inside long tubes like this that are positioned across the Gulf. We're really getting the A tour here, past the garbage cans. So this is a little more crowded than I anticipated. So this is little... where we keep the tide gauges. <laughs> That's right. Behind all the junk. And you can see sea level is rising and we need to know how high the water will get over the coming years. Um, because uh, if we build uh, sea walls, if we build uh, other big infrastructure, those things will cost millions, hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars. The oldest sea level records in Texas are in Galveston. And over the last 100 years, they show sea level is up by two feet according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So why is this happening? Philippe says you gotta start with emissions from power plants and automobiles, which pump huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the air. That carbon traps heat in the atmosphere, which makes the climate hotter. Most of that heat gets absorbed by the oceans, but the heat also makes the ocean water expand a bit, while at the same time, glaciers and ice sheets melt into the sea. So that's what makes the sea level rise, about the thickness of two quarters every year, year after year. But Philippe is telling me along the Texas Gulf Coast, something else is happening too. See the ocean there? The water is rising, but something's happening with the land also. The land is sinking. The land is sinking. Exactly. And if you're here, it doesn't really matter. If the land is sinking or the water is rising, your feet are gonna get wet either way. So, uh, for a sort of a tide gauge here measures the combination of both, the land sinking and the water rising. And so that's why we call it relative sea level rise rather than sea level rise. Relative sea level rise. It starts with sinking land, which is a result of pumping out underground fluids like water or oil, which leaves a cavity below, giving the ground above room to sag. After that, you add rising water. Taken together, according to research from the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, relative sea level rise is worse in Texas than almost anywhere else in the country. So is it fair to say that the land sinking is almost, it's a multiplier of the sea level rise? It makes it worse. Yeah, it makes, the, it, makes it more challenging. <laughs> so we know the water is rising. How else is the ocean affected by climate change? Oh. So return guys goes here. That's Dr. Xinping Hu. He's an oceanographer with Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Xinping is telling me in addition to absorbing heat from the air, ocean water is also absorbing massive amounts of carbon dioxide. As we're moving along, he's siphoning up a small amount of that ocean water. What is that testing for? Carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide. In the water? Yes. Xinping is telling me adding carbon dioxide to the ocean fundamentally changes water chemistry, making it more acidic. That change interferes with how some organisms develop, like oysters, impeding their ability to make hard shells. Scientists have even discovered organisms whose shells are dissolving. What are the long-term implications of these changes? Uh, the long-term implication is, uh, you know, if the water is getting more and more acidified, you're running into the risk of uh, um, altering the balance in the ocean. 
So we know the water is rising and the chemistry of the water is getting more acidic. But can you actually tell that things are changing? That's Katie Swanson with the University of Texas Marine Science Institute. She studies the impact of sea level rise on marshes, which provide essential food, refuge, and habitat for fish and wildlife. Plants need sediment, like they can't be in water and inundated all the time. She's out here measuring sediment levels, which is basically the sand under the water. And so this is what makes this technique so like useful and powerful is because we're getting like millimeter accuracy. So that's like 30, 34 and uh, yeah, three, point one? 344. Uh, My neck is getting very strong right now. <laughs> yeah. The core of the whole thing. This is like yeah. a good workout. With sea level rise, if there's not enough sediment coming into the marsh, the marsh is drowning. You're losing the marsh and it's not being replaced anywhere else. You're saying because the water is rising, a lot of these plants are just having a hard time accommodating. Yeah, they're just being inundated or they're staying in the water more frequently, which is basically drowning them. Katie says that's important to people too, because marsh plants are natural protection against shoreline erosion and flooding. So, I mean, if you go to like the same habitat over and over again, like every time we'd show up and like there was dry sediment in marsh plants and now it's constantly under a foot of water and there's seagrass, which would mean that it's always inundated. A major report recently published by the United Nations got the world's attention. It says it's unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, and land, changing it in some ways that can't be reversed. So what does that mean for the Texas Gulf Coast? I'm meeting back up with Philippe All right. for a little demonstration. If the thickness of two quarters is about the amount the sea rises every year, and you add in about another two quarters for the sinking land, this is what 15 years of change looks like to communities on the Gulf. What kind of responsibility do they have to plan for this? Uh, they, they, they should think about it. Folks who design coastal infrastructure should think about it all the time. It's what world leaders are thinking about now in Glasgow, Scotland at a UN summit with a mission to drastically cut emissions. The goal is to limit future climate change by eliminating half of greenhouse gases by 2030 and all of them by 2050. Here's an example of why that matters. Near Galveston Bay is the iconic Space Center Houston. Using research and images from the science nonprofit Climate Central, this is what it looks like today. In a best case scenario, this is what sea level will look like by the end of this century and beyond. And that's if world leaders actually meet the challenge to limit rising temperatures. This is a worst case scenario if we keep doing what we're doing now. Along the Gulf, the refineries in Texas City, the boardwalk in Galveston, and the downtown of Corpus Christi would be gradually swallowed up by the rising sea. Longer term, uh, we're gonna have either to, to spend quite a bit of money to adapt or, or move out. Human nature has, has difficulty acting now to prevent something that happens in the, in, the, in the long time. And that's really what we should be doing. So I've learned a lot about sea level rise. The ocean is definitely rising. We know it because scientists have been studying this for decades. The big question we came down with was how much should we all be worried about this? For answers, you've got to look beyond how normal everything looks today and wrap your mind around a future where huge parts of Texas are changed forever.